Welcome to the College of Engineering, Computing, and Applied Sciences, or CCAS. Uh, my name is Kareeth Brown, and I am a junior management major uh, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I am serving as a team leader for this year's Orientation Ambassador team. Today, I'm joined by two ambassadors, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. I'm Molly Turk. I'm a sophomore bioengineering major from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, I'm Jasmine McTire. I'm a junior chemical engineering major, and I live in Deltona, Florida. This live stream is meant to be for college-specific questions, so if you do have questions related to the college, you know, feel free to drop them in the chat. And if you, if for those general questions, um, if you do want those in, you know, have a chance to ask them at the end of it, as well as, you know, on an Instagram live stream, which will be focused more on getting um, on involvement around campus, um, which will be this Thursday. I'm not sure by the time, but you can follow that Instagram page at Clemson underscore orientation. And for orientation, I'm going to go ahead and plug some of our other uh, ways of engaging with students over the course of the summer. Other would be TikTok, which is at Clemson Orientation. Uh, also podcasts, which will be available on Anchor, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, and that name is Clemson Orientation. And they'll cover various topics of incoming students with their transition to Clemson. Personal out and as well as personal outreach, and you know you'll be hearing from your ambassadors, you know, through the course of the summer. And then, of course, YouTube. We're not currently streaming on YouTube right now, but this video will be posted on YouTube after the live stream is over. And that name is Clemson Orientation. So, if you are subscribed, um, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. So, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into questions. So, Molly, how was your transition to Clemson? My transition to Clemson was like academically a little bit rocky. I wasn't very prepared for a STEM curriculum at my high school. So I definitely had to go in with like the mindset of I need to find my resources. I need to get in, in like good study habits and that sort of thing. But once I got that down, had some meetings with the ASC, went to Rice Hearing, it got a lot easier. And same question for you, Jasmine. Um, I think my transition went really well. Um, mainly because the girls on my floor were in the same kind of classes that I was in. And so we did things like academically together. And then we also did things um, like went to Tiger Pro together and joined some similar clubs. And so it really, like I had the connections from the, the beginning to kind of help with that transition. Okay. So Jasmine, what has been your favorite academic memory and your favorite non-academic memory at Clemson? Um, I think my favorite academic memory has to be um, my lab groups, like both lab groups that I've had so far have been stellar. Um, <laughs> I just really like lab isn't something I necessarily look forward to every week, but once I'm there, my lab group really helps make lab go by really fast and like I just enjoy their company and so I think that's really been some of my favorite memories have come from lab and then non-academically probably when it snowed this past year because it was like the end in near in the end of winter it was like 70 degrees the week before I didn't think we were going to get snow this year and then it snowed and it kept snowing <laughs> and it was enough for us to have like snowball fights so that was fun okay same question for you Molly um my favorite academic memory is probably from engineering 1020 which you take as a first semester freshman we have this big project near the end of the semester called the Excel project. And it's kind of difficult if you've never done stuff like that before. So me and my friends were all like really busy with it and we were all really stressed about it. So we went down to Rice sitting together and like sat in our little circle with our laptops and kept asking questions. It was just really fun to like have friends to work through with something that difficult with. And then my favorite non-academic memory is probably my first football game. I was in the Central Spirit sections, which is the front row on the side where the ROTC and at the end of the game the wall and rushed the field and I had my seniors next to me like coaching me on how to get over the wall which was super fun they were just really nice and helpful. So Molly why did you choose your major? I chose my major for a really like specific technical reason I actually don't want to be an engineer I want to be an orthopedic trauma surgeon and a lot of orthopedic surgery is based in biomechanics, which is really only taught to bioengineers. So I wanted that 
like academic basis before I went to medical school. Okay, and same for you, Jasmine. Um, I took a chemistry class like everybody else, and I love chemistry. And so um, after taking it twice, like chemistry and then AP Chem, I decided that I wanted to do something centered around that. And I found chemical engineering my junior year when I was in an engineering class. And I went to a camp, and it was just history from there. I just enjoy the content. So, <laughs> so, and so going... Um, Yes, yeah, so going further into your Clemson, into your Clemson career, how has your overall experience been with the college, Jasmine? Um, I think it's been good. I have, I've enjoyed all my professors. Um, they're a little, I don't know, like they're loud and like they don't seem approachable in class. But once you go to office hours, like it's a complete personality flip. And so I've enjoyed the professors that I've had and the people I go to classes with, which were, you know, people in my major. So <laughs> there's that. And same for, you, um, same for you, Molly, what has been your overall experience with the college? Um, I think it's been really good. CCAS is a really big college, so we have a lot of resources. So there's always like the big college that you have behind you, but then we also separate into so many majors and departments and concentrations that you always have like your group to do things with and your group to take classes with study with and you there's always someone doing what you're doing that you can like bond with and get help from. Okay. So Molly, you just come came out of that general engineering, you know, coursework. So what can you what can you tell us about that? So general engineering, everyone starts in, everyone has to take it. And it starts with engineering 1020. And then depending on your like prior credits, usually uh, chem 1010, math 1060, English 1030 and uh, gen ed of some kind and you can sub the other ones but you always have to take engineering 1020 and then after that you either go into matlab for most engineers or i know jasmine as a chemi and biosystems they took a different coding program and that like you get started and it's really nice because even if you're not quite sure which department you want to go into you're going to be taught about every department and you're going to get a good general basis for like things that every engineer needs to know like how to track your units really well how to watch for wording and problems, how to code in Excel. And it's just like a really helpful curriculum where it was the first time that I was taking a class and I was like, this is so useful. I'm gonna use all of this. Jasmine, is there anything you wanna add on that? Um, no, I think Molly kind of covered it. Like she mentioned the two majors, I'm a chemical engineer, so I took a different class instead of MATLAB. And it was more so an introductory into the curriculum as opposed to a coding class. So there's that. I can't say anything about biosystems. So. Okay. So yes, we have a question coming from Jacob. It says, what are work opportunities like for CCAS students on campus? So I'm, my work opportunity is not CCAS specific. I'm on a work study program, which is a federally subsidized job on campus. So I actually work in the pharmacy. I work in Redford Health Center. But as far as like paid jobs on campus, I know there are some paid research opportunities or you can join just a regular research group for like off or outside of classwork. Maybe Jasmine has some more ideas on that. Yes, I do. Okay, so your professors are almost all involved in some form of research. They love to talk about it, go ask them about it. And they're looking, they do look for undergraduates, so you can, it doesn't hurt to ask. Like, hey, are you looking for an undergraduate research kind of thing? And uh, most of them, I don't, well, actually, I'm not going to say that. Some are paid, so you get paid by the hour. There's also, like, in the lab buildings, they have um, undergraduate lab assistants that work there, too. Some are work study jobs, some aren't, so you could always look there. It, like in Hunter, where the chemistry labs are, there's opportunities there as well. Okay. So Jeff, what is it like to be in your specific major? We all know it can be different, you know, when you look at different colleges and then split between different departments, but what is it like to be in your specific major? Um, well, my major specific classes, there's only one section. So we all see each other and we can all like recognize each other from that. Um, there's a lot of, I guess, group work. Not I don't want to say group work, but it doesn't have to be group work, but it's good to work with other people in your major so a lot of assignments actually 
require you to work with a lot of people, which I enjoy. Um, yeah, I don't know. My major's small. Like, it, it dwindles a little bit. <laughs> so um, it's working with the same people a lot of the time. I don't know what else to say about my major. <laughs> same question for you, Molly. What is it like to be in your specific major? So I'm just getting into my major. I'm not really the expert on the department yet because I just finished my freshman year and switched right after. So I'll be taking my intro major classes in the fall, but like Jasmine, there was only one section of each of my intro classes. So I'm assuming it'll be a similar field where it's just the same people. But my major, I really like because there's like kind of a big movement nationally towards my major because it's a biomedical research, which is a big deal um, right now. Specifically, like the field is expanding a lot. So it's really nice to have like a lot of, I don't know, kind of like global attention on the field that I'm really interested in. Okay, so what are some things you are looking forward to in your major? Or we you that question? Uh, I'm looking forward to like my biomechanics classes and really late in my major, like my senior year, I have like orthopedic engineering, cardiovascular engineering, tissue engineering, and those are such niche classes, but they like, their subject matter is like what I love about science. So I'm very excited to like get into that. Okay. For me, it's um, very similar. Like we have, our, we call it unit operate, unit op. It's unit operations one and two. We take one at the end of our junior year and then one in our senior year and it's really like applying everything we've learned the last three years and stuff kind of what I'm looking forward to to like all the classes you have to use all of that knowledge in these labs so so are there so for those that we have um at Clemson and everything called a living learning community or LLC is there an, a living learning community for CCAS the one if you can answer it yes there's one it's for CCAS and college of science and it's called rise and most both me and jasmine lived in it it's for residents in science and engineering based in lever and then you can also live in burns and we both really liked it i really liked the rise tutoring that was my favorite thing ever because they will actually do your homework with you which is very very helpful and not every tutoring service will do that so i really liked living in rise i actually just moved out of my building last weekend they also have WISE, which is Women in Science and Engineering, and that's in um, uh, Mickel, which used to be called Stadium Suite, and so that's for, you know, women in science and engineering, and they have similar programs as Rise. So. Okay. So, you know, besides Rise and those other workshops, what are some other resources that, you know, what are some resources that can help you in CCAS, you know? Um, PAL tutors, um, there's majority of them are in STEM classes, so you're, they'll announce them at the beginning of class. Uh, PAL stands for Peer Assisted Learning, and so like the PAL tutor will take the class with you, and then they'll have sessions outside of class to where they can go over content again, and that's really helpful like to just ask questions that you didn't get to ask in class or to get more practice, like if it's a math class or a chemistry class, it's a lot more practice. And so those are really helpful. Um, they're in a lot of the general, like lower level classes, like chemistry, math, physics, and all that. We also have um, another like tutoring service. The Academic Success Center offers like scheduled individual tutoring hours, or you can just go in and they'll have some general sessions like approaching exam time. Okay. And we actually had another question that says, where can tutors be found for RISE? Lever or Burns, um, and how accessible are they? Yeah, how how accessible are they? So, and how like how busy are their hours? So they always have scheduled hours. It's usually five nights a week, Sunday through Thursday, and it's just all of the tutors. There's usually like five or so per night. And this past semester they were just in Lever, but usually they're in Lever and Burns in the classrooms that are on the bottom floor. And you just go in, and usually they'll have like. A tutor assigned to like one assignment for the night so like if there's a really big MATLAB assignment there will be a tutor working with the students for that or if it's a really slow night and you just need some general help on like a like a regular week that doesn't have an exam or anything you can just go up to one of the tutors and be like I have a question about this can you help me and they'll just sit down with you and help. Do you have anything to add Jasmine? Um, 
yeah, I think that about covers it. I don't think we mentioned Utah's. I know my department uses undergraduate um, teacher's assistants, mm -hmm. and sometimes they'll hold, well, majority of the time, they'll hold their own office hours, and it's really helpful because they're actually, like, they talk to the professor, and so they know the homework assignments, and they may be the ones grading the homework assignments, so to going to them for help also is recommended. <laughs> yeah. Engineering 1020 and MATLAB both have Utahs. And then I don't know about your, your chemistry specific class for second semester. They had Utahs as well. <laughs> okay. So get into more of those um, different like opportunities. Have either one of you thought about studying abroad? If so, where and then, you know, how, how, like, how does someone go about that? I'm planning to study abroad if we can. Uh, this next summer, I'm going to do an anatomy intensive, which is more of a pre-med study abroad in Cyprus. But I know there's some other opportunities for people in my major that go to places like Japan and then some universities in Europe. Um, I don't plan to study abroad, but uh, my department offers a study abroad opportunity to Denmark. It's like what they call it a May master. So like it's four weeks and you take your unit ops courses in Denmark. Um, but most people in my department, if they study abroad, they either do that or they do their general education requirements abroad. Mm -hmm. That way it doesn't mess with their curriculum. Or some people will complete a minor abroad. Yeah. Okay. And how about any kind of clubs or organizations, with, whether it's within Clemson or if it's within CCAS in general? Like, what are some examples of them? And then how would someone go about, like, those big clubs? Like around Clemson? A lot of our clubs are like the, th the ones that we think of are usually CI groups, which are research groups. So there's like the Clemson Concrete Canoe Team, I know. There's Clemson Rocket Club. Those are normally like research groups, but they kind of function more like clubs. And then every department has like a, a student run club. So like we have like the bioengineering club. And then there's like really any opportunity for a specific thing that you want to go into there's a club for that or you could always start a club for that and you can find those on tiger quest the website or at the tiger pro which is like a club fair at the beginning of each semester yeah and be on the lookout for um, professional organizations as well to join because that's how like in the chemi department the chemical engineering department we have the american institute of chemical engineers whatever organization on campus and that's where like corporate partners will come and like you can hand out your resume and maybe you'll get an internship, like things like that to also be on the lookout for. We also have Clemson Engineers for Developing Countries, which is a uh, volunteer group. I forgot about that one. Oh yeah, another volunteer. <laughs> we have um, campus outreach. I have majority of the, chem the engineering departments participate and that's just all volunteer. You can choose to do it or not, that's another way. If you need volunteer hours too. <laughs> okay. And you just got another question that says, what is involved in biosystems engineering? What jobs can be expected to come out of that? Biosystems engineering is like um sort of a combination of environmental engineering and then what is traditionally seen as bioengineering, which is like plant engineering. And it's normally for environmental reasons but you can look up their curriculum. If you type in biosystems engineering Clemson curriculum, you can look up and see exactly what classes they take all four years. And then that department will also have on their departmental page information about what like job opportunities, what fields people go into after that. You'll also learn about that in engineering 1020 about what each department is. So getting into so when you look back into your freshman year, Molly, um, with you, know, you moving out, you just now moving out, when you think back to your freshman year, what's a piece of advice that you would tell yourself? That it's okay to ask for help, that everyone needs help. It's like everyone's gonna need help eventually. It's not that you're failing. It's not that you're doing bad. And like, that was like a big thing for me is that the first time I needed to like make a meeting with an academic coach at the Academic Success Center, I felt like I was failing somehow and like like it was a big imposter syndrome moment where like I don't deserve to be here someone definitely let me in here by accident there's no way I'm gonna be able to do this and it was so much better 
after I realized that like everyone's gonna need help eventually, I might as well just get help now. Okay. Same for you, Jasmine. Um, don't be afraid to talk to the people that are sitting around you. I'm a huge introvert, so I'm not gonna necessarily engage in conversation with people around me. But I mentioned it before, a lot of these assignments are meant to be done with other people or to be talked about out loud. And so you need to talk to people like that sitting around you because those are the people you're going to see every day. Also, if you miss class, like how else are you going to get the information from class if you don't talk to the people you sit by? So that's definitely like go ahead and talk to those people that you sit by. Okay. We actually have another question that says, is taking the engineering 1000 seminar worth it? Does that mean once a, does that mean once a week or how does that process work? Engineering 1000 is major discovery. So it does meet once a week. It's a, I believe one or two credit hour class maybe. And it's only for one and then it's only for half the semester. So you stop halfway through the semester. And two of my friends took it and they really liked it because they got to hear from not only people in the different majors like you hear from one every single week not only from people in those majors but also from like corporate partners and see exactly what someone with that degree would be doing it really like there's no way it can hurt you it's really only a help and it was really useful for my friends to like solidify because they were stuck between like mechanical civil and industrial which can sometimes be seen as similar so they were really stuck between what to do so they got like an in-depth well, I like that corporate partner. I would love to work with a company like that. So this is my major now. Yeah, I agree. It's only really useful if you, like, I don't know, if you don't know what you want to do. Like, I knew I wanted to be a chemical engineer, so I didn't take the class because, like, going to that would be a waste for me, I felt like. So if you know, like, 110%, like, that is what you want to pursue, then you don't, it's not necessarily going to, like, help. I mean, it wouldn't hurt, but it won't necessarily help. Okay. So my next question is what laptop, you know, one, one base question is laptop. So what laptop would you recommend for, you know, for CCAS? Is like, is there any recommendations? You know, is there any kind of um, specification if they need? Oh, laptop. Um, I think you said yeah. laptop. <laughs> I was like, what? So, um, CCAS has a website on, like Clemson has a website that recommends computers um, for students. The only thing that they do not recommend are Macs because um, you still have, we do a lot of our software stuff on Windows. And so if you have a Mac, you'll still have to download Windows and run it for um, those classes. So other than that, it's kind of up to the student, but yeah, Mac. Are not recommended. I think Molly can talk a little bit more about what you go through if you do get a Mac. Yeah, if you do get a Mac, you have to go to CCIT and have them like dual run your Mac processor and your Windows so that whenever you are doing a program like MATLAB, for example, you can run it on Windows. Also, in classes, they will teach on the Windows program. So if you are running Mac, even like little things like Excel, things are in different order, they're in a different location. So it's just like did she freeze for you too yes hold on let's see if she is gonna come back okay um Okay, um, okay we're, gonna, we're gonna go ahead and move into the next question um, that I have for you, Jasmine. Um, this one is really related to you. So like, what's your favorite spot to study on campus? Um, if I, okay, so if it's just like homework or something, I like to study where I live. So when I lived in Burns, I studied in the basement, um, the Burns like study area down there, the classroom. And when I'm, where, where I lived last year in Dawson, I studied in the common living space. Um, if it's like preparing for finals or something big that's going to take multiple hours, then I study in the library on the third floor. It's my favorite place in the library to study. Okay. 
I can actually answer this question too. Um, honestly, I have like various spaces, not like just like one spot or anything. Um, if it's you know if it's in my room, but I'll probably say like in the future, my favorite spot will be our new college of business building. Um, like I said in the beginning, I am a management major, so that's going to be like my new home. Honestly, um, if it's not that building, it'll probably be in the library since I do work there. Um, I work on the fifth floor, so you know, just while I'm working, I'll just go ahead and study and try to knock out any kind of work that I have. Uh, yeah, I okay. I've studied in other buildings on campus, like or like students in my department like to set like do their homework or study outside of a professor's office, so that way when they have questions, they can just go in. So I've definitely done that, and then I've studied in other just random buildings, other college buildings on campus, like. Or Daniel and things like that. It just depends where I am. But yeah, yeah. I'm trying to, see... to reconnect. Yeah, I just seen that as well. But you don't just come and sit down and say just really just like determines where you're at because. But obviously, you'll see people studying any and everywhere on on Clemson campus. I mean, whether it's at a Chick Fil A, whether it's in a dining hall or anything. You'll see people studying, trying to knock their work out. Yeah, I had a paper due once, and I spent the entire day in um, Schletter doing that paper. Yeah. So I was studying in the dining hall, too. All right. Monica, can you hear us? I got it fixed. All right. We're actually answering the question. Um, the question I asked was, what's your favorite spot to study on campus? The bottom floor of the library, because I need absolute silence if I'm going to study. It's like, I don't know, my maximum level of like things I can pay attention to at once. It's very low, apparently, and I just need to be in complete silence. So I love the bottom floor. But if it's a really nice day also outside by the amphitheater on the like grassy stair step things. Okay. So we'll get back into um, it's also like when it comes to classes, what, um, like, how, like, someone who hasn't approached the professor, you know, how, like, how does someone go about that? And, like, have, are you, are you comfortable saying, like, are your professors approachable or something? And then, like, how are office hours work or something? Our professors can seem a little bit scary because they lecture in front of a lot of people at once and they're often, like, really experienced and they seem, like, super, scary and unapproachable and like they would look down on you if you had a like stupid question. They're really nice. They are super sweet. They will answer anything. And like, if you're scared to start talking to them, ask them about their research and they'll start like really excitedly talking about what they're going to research because it's whatever they're really interested in. And then you can kind of guide that into like what you really needed to talk about. Okay. Yeah. Some of my, pro okay. So the professors have access to your like CUID picture. So some of my professors have actually like learned our names prior to class. <laughs> so I go to office hours, they'd already know who I am. So there's that awkwardness, I guess, of introducing yourself and like explaining what class you're from is gone. Uh, so there's that. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with Molly. There's like a lot of students they have to control and like a lot of material they have to teach you at once. So they're going to seem unapproachable in lecture, but they're a lot different in office hours. And they're there to help you. Like, they want to help you. Sometimes they're like, nobody came to office hours. I was a little sad, a little lonely. So <laughs> they do want to see you. Yeah. So going from the professors in the classroom to the advising sessions, like, what are those? Like, how are your advisors? You get a different advisor freshman year versus your, like, years in your major. So my freshman year advisor was actually a family friend, which was so nice. She was super fun. And she was really good about, a lot of freshman advisors were super good about this. As soon as she like met me for the first time, she was like, okay, or met me for the first time in advising. She was like, okay, what do you want to do? And I was like, I want to go to medical school. So she immediately put that in my curriculum and didn't make me wait to start that until I had like my forever advisor, I would guess. And that was super helpful that she was just really receptive to what I needed instead of just putting me into the like cookie cutter engineering curriculum. And I've met with my major specific advisor. We have one 
um, we have a primary advisor now, like we have a secondary one. So I technically have like two in my department, um, but they're both really um, like receptive to what I want to do. So like, if I'm like, I want to minor in like women's studies, they're like, okay, sure. <laughs> Just put it in and I'll approve it. So like they'll listen to what you want, um, what you want to do. And they like know the curriculum inside and out. They know like what can fit and what can't fit. All right. All right. If anyone has any questions, feel free to drop it in the Q and A box or in the chat box. Um, whether it's the general question or if it's a question related to the college, we'll be happy with answering those. Um, my next question for Jasmine: uh, What's the hardest lesson you learned during your freshman year? Um. You have to you have to master the material. You can't just like know it and understand it. You have to master it in order to actually excel in these classes. So just because like you know the concept doesn't mean that like you know well enough to do any kind of scenario your professor's gonna think up on the exam. Same, and same question for you, Marley. Um, mine is again just like learning how to ask for help. Because the first time you do feel stupid and you kind of feel like you're failing, but it makes it so much better when you ask for help and you like get the work done and you like really like get, <laughs> get it together for <laughs> lack of a better term. Cause it just makes like your academic life go smoother. You like enjoy the content more when you know how to break it down. Okay. And we just got another question that says, what does mechanical engineering entail and what jobs will be available to mechanic, mechanical engineering majors? Well, neither of us are mechanical engineers, but um, the curriculum, you can find it online. I can't tell you much about the actual material. I have met some mechanical engineers and there's a lot you can actually do with that. Like you can go into like, aerospace, um, engineering, things like that. Um, there's also the like co-op program and that's one way to kind of work in industry before you graduate to kind of figure out what you actually want to do. Yeah, mechanical is usually the department that we have that funnels into specifics like automotive, aerospace, like different, like very specific fields like that. That's usually where the mechies go. So, Marley, what is your one must-have when it comes to college? Headphones. Headphones. All day, every day. Always have headphones. Because, like I mentioned, I can't study unless there's absolute silence. There is a caveat to that. I can study with headphones in if I'm in a space, like, outside, or I can't get down to the library for whatever reason. Like, if I only have an hour. So, that is definitely a necessity. Also, we have a big campus and walking is a little bit, like it's very pretty, but like it, it's the same walk every day. So putting in headphones makes the walk go faster. Um, I'd say a planner. I've used a planner since like freshman year of high school. So I'm a huge like, I need to write it down so I'm not gonna remember it kind of person. Plus like, if you want me to hang out with you, you kind of got to let me know in advance. Otherwise I'll probably allocate time to doing something else. Cause I allocate time to myself too. Like this time I'm going to spend watching TV and not doing anything else, not thinking about class. So a planner is really good for me to help like make sure I allocate appropriate amount of time to everything. Yeah. And if you don't like planners like me, I'm not really a big planner person, but I do utilize Google calendar. Um, I mean, I just keep that open on my laptop all day, every day, and, you know, have it, like, color-coded to how I want it to be. So uh, that's if you don't like planners. I'm not a planner person. But, yeah, utilize Google Calendar is also a very beneficial one as well. Yeah, I use both because Google Calendar syncs to my phone. <laughs> I do. I have, like, multiple. Like, I have my planner that I write down assignments in, and then I have, like, my calendar that I on my iPad that I take notes on that's, like, my monthly calendar. <laughs> You got to have your system. You got to get your system under control. Yeah. All right. So another question. So do you have any tips about time management or balancing academics and social life? Make sure you well, do I'm, what Jasmine does. 
And yeah, I, I already kind of touched on it. Like, my friends can tell you that, like, I have to actually actively think, can I afford to go downtown to eat pizza today or not? <laughs> like, do I need this time to do homework? I'm not a procrastinator. I never have been. So I don't know if I'm the best to get tips from because I can't stand procrastinating. Like, I don't like stress. So <laughs> I am a procrastinator. I definitely put things off. But... Yeah, definitely, like, making yourself kind of, like, accountable for your schedule. So, like, if you, like, plan out your week on, like, Sunday night and you're, like, these are my class times, this is the things that I absolutely have to do this week. Like, say you have, like, a club meeting that you have to go to or you have a meeting at the ASC or something like that, write those in and then write in, like, if you have a test coming up that you know about, write in when you're going to study for that and, like, block out as much as you can so that you do, like, have a schedule that you have to follow for the day instead of just kind of freestyling throughout the day and being like, well, I got time here. So I guess I'll just like study or whatever. Cause you're not going to do that. You're just going to be like, well, I got time. So I might as well do nothing because that's like, you're never going to want to start working. You just like, have to already be working if that makes sense. Yeah. And take time for yourself. Like don't just do school. Yes. <laughs> you know, with friends. Also, if you like, if you're really into sports, I love our Clemson sports. I'll like schedule into my week. Like I'm going to go to the baseball game this week so that for those three hours, I can't do anything, but like go to the baseball game. Like that's my time to do whatever, hang out with my friends. And like, it's just a really nice like block of time, like from the start of the game to the end of the game. That's, I'm not going to do school. Self-care is the best care, honestly. (laughs) And I can actually answer this question right here. It says, has there been any news on dorms for first years or any update with coronavirus in the fall semester? Also, I saw some classes will be online regardless. So that has not, well, the uh, housing that has, well, dorms has to do with Clemson housing. Um, I don't know any news on that, but they're still trying to finalize some dates. They're still coming up with some dates and they're coming up with um, any kind of updates on housing for first year students. Um, in terms of updates for the coronavirus in the fall semester, the leadership team is also co- trying to come up with some things. They're Right now they're just um, trying to figure out what's going to be going on in terms of around the campus, in terms of safety, and they're trying to make a decision. Right now they have like specific phases going on. Um, I believe you type in Clemson University coronavirus and it should be a website that pops up in terms of the updates that they have going on for the fall semester. Um, and yes, you are right that there were some classes that were moved online, like um, some of the majority of the English classes were moved online. Um, and those, I think those, those updates just happened this past week in which they did move classes online. But there has been no official update in terms of what's going to be happening during the fall semester and like the academic plan for that one. Um, anybody have any other questions? Jasmine, what are your concentrations and emphases? <laughs> so I, there's nine emphasis errors. Um, as a kidney, you have to have an emphasis, a concentration, or a minor. So there's nine emphasis areas. I don't know them all. There's like applied science and engineering, business administration, polymers, so on and so forth. There's one concentration route that actually modifies your curriculum a little bit. It's a concentration in biomolecular engineering. And then you can substitute those with a minor and that also satisfies your emphasis area requirement. Yeah, in bioengineering, we also have a required concentration. We have two, biological and biomaterials. I'm a biomaterials concentration, but those two do change your curriculum and you'll take different classes your junior and senior year, depending on which one you pick. Yeah. As a, ma- as a management major, I also have a concentration. Um, right now, I'm currently entrepreneurship, but I'm going to switch over to, mostly I'm going to switch over to business analytics as you know, seeing some of the things that um, I do like to get into like numbers and stuff. So, um, question says tips for fi- for the tips for the financial aid process. 
I struggle with the financial aid process every single time I have to go through it because I have divorced parents, which makes a thousand more forms just like appear out of the ground. So it definitely can get frustrating. But the thing about the financial aid office is that their only job is to like help you with it. So like I email the financial aid office all the time and they always email me back with a really good response about exactly what I was talking about or like if and when we go back to campus, you can go into the financial aid office and meet with the financial aid advisors and they can walk you through things like step by step. They're super helpful. Like they're, they're just super great about walking you through the process because all the forms and things can get kind of a lot because all the technical language and that sort of thing can get a little scary, but they're super good at breaking it down for you. Yeah, my financial aid sometimes gets wonky because I'm an RA, I'm a resident assistant. And so that is actually considered a part of financial aid. So it messes with my package in August every year. So um, being, I guess, preemptive with um, that whole thing kind of helps. Like they get busy really close to when your bill is due. Um, so yeah, any tips? I guess talk to them early if you foresee anything kind of messing with your financial aid and try and get it. Like, I guess, make them aware so that they can fix it when the time comes. Mm -hmm. And financial aid is located in Sykes Hall. That's what have, so. They're also finaid at clemson.edu for their email. Yeah. They answer really fast. <laughs> they do. <laughs> I'm not sure if we already went over this question when talking about um, what are the questions prior, but Jasmine, how do you de-stress? So I like to do things by myself, but then I also like to do things with friends. So it really depends on what kind of stress I'm in. If I'm in stress from having to interact with a ton of people, I take time for myself and just kind of treat myself to like a meal or like watch a movie. Um, but if it's just from like classes or something, I want to have fun, then I will ask my friends. Like they want to do anything together. We may go to like a sports event. Um, not just football or like volleyball that's always fun volleyball um, but just doing something together like going to a movie or something yeah. same for you mommy I love a Clemson volleyball game Clemson volleyball is so much fun yeah I I really like the clubs that I've joined and they like don't join too many clubs obviously don't overextend yourself but like I've joined enough clubs to where they're probably doing something every week so I always have like an event or a meeting or like a social or something that I can go to to be with my friends if we all like have been too busy to schedule time to hang out together and then I really like just like Jasmine said just kind of being alone I really like going on walks around campus because it's so pretty and you just like got to find time that you're not going to think about school because I also have like the thought spirals where I'll like sit down and like I should be doing this and this and this and this and like you have to lock that out and be like no this is my time to not do any of that yeah. I go grocery shopping that's not good so that's spending money but <laughs> <laughs> I do like to go grocery shopping that's kind of like a de-stress like especially when I go with my friends we share one cart and like we just go up and down every aisle and we just have <laughs> random conversations <laughs> every little thing can be fun in college with your friends I know for me, I usually just, you know, listen to some music or, you know, I just, for me, I just like lay down. I keep, try to keep myself, you know, um, calm and collected, try not to stress as much, but when it does come to like a close bit, you know, just try to lay down, deep breaths, close my eyes for a sec, listen to some music and stuff. But. And if it's a really, really hard day, you know, a nap never hurts. Naps are always a good option because you're literally unconscious. You can't think about things when you're unconscious. That is all the questions I have. If anyone has any other questions, feel free to drop them in the chat or in the Q&A section. Me and Jasmine are basically just the engineers that really like science. We're like, science is the best subject. We're gonna do it all the time. 
Yeah, science is the best subject. I have enjoyed every single chemistry class that I've taken. <laughs> I've insane. taken a lot That's at this brilliant. point. I have to take Orgo this coming fall, and I'm scared. It's fun. I will. I I thought it was fun. <laughs> I've been told I'm gonna like it because I didn't like Jen. I didn't like Jen. I like Jen too. They told me I was gonna like Orgo. Maybe they just told me that so that I would look at it better. <laughs> Maybe it all depends. Like if you get it, you get it. If you don't get it, you'll get it in a month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just really like a good biology class, you know, some human anatomy every day, all day. I like math. I enjoy math a lot. So, I mean, I've, I've been told I'm in the right field. Yeah, for sure. If you like chemistry and math, I think you're good. I think it's something like 40% of bioengineers are pre-meds. So we're all That's like, yeah, it's mostly the biomaterials concentrations are pre-meds because we do like the orthopedic cardiovascular tissue, all that. Not a science guy. You know what? Oh, science is so fun. I'm wearing DNA earrings. Like, how cool. I know. Pretty snazzy. Did you hear, somebody was telling me, a biology major, that they're thinking that it's hydrophobic, um, re repelling, like, forces that hold DNA together, and it's not the hydrogen bonding. Everything I know is a lie. <laughs> Did you I, know that? I haven't fact checked it yet, but I was like, are you That would be insane it? if it was just hydrophobic. That would be so because crazy. That's why biologists, biologists, biology majors think that hydrogen bonds are so strong. It's because they hold DNA together. Whereas chemists, chemists, yeah, they're not. other that's people, yeah. they're weak because they're not actual bonds. They're forces. But if it was I just mean, hydrophobic, that would be so cool. Wouldn't it? I thought that was interesting. I gotta look it up. I haven't, but yeah, I need to know like who's researching that. Like who's who said that? <laughs> but if it's true, like I was like, it was true that. Did you know that, that all DNA is right-handed? All DNA turns to the right. I did not know that. Yeah, every like every DNA ever, like every animal, always turns to the right. Hmm. It's so weird. Biology is wild. <laughs> I learn something new every day. I had, whenever I was taking Math 1080 this past semester, a very, very long debate with my professor about what was more important, biology or math. Because obviously there's no right answer to what science or math is the most important, but we talked about it for a long time. I mean, I feel like I'm on the side of math, but... I mean, like, me. <laughs> they're all interconnected, so we were they like, are. we were going in circles, where he was like, but biology depends on math. I'm like, but everything is does not real without biology, because we are biology. And like, it was a whole circle of just going back and forth. <laughs> See, your professors are super nice. They'll always do that. Yeah, one professor showed her her dog, a picture of her dog, like, almost every lecture. Like, Dion and Mud, like, she showed a picture of him, all muddy, because he <laughs> ran outside or <laughs> whatever, so. Dr. Redding, the biology professor, he puts a red panda on every one of his biology slides. Like, not every slide, but every, like, PowerPoint presentation, there's always a red panda on the front. And then this past semester, he had a baby. And on the last day of class, he was like, your finals are over. Here's my baby. <laughs> it was so cute. Oh, my goodness. Let's see. Oh, I, this is a, something I have. So they tell you you need a graphing calculator for mm -hmm. your math classes. I bought one for my last calc class and I still didn't even use it. They're like, yeah, you're gonna need it. And I, I literally don't need a graphing calculator. I've been through all four calculus classes now. You can't even have a calculator in the first, what, three? Um, in the first, yeah, the first calc one and two, you can't even use the calculator. Calc one, two, and is it math 10, 2062 that you can have one? You, it depends on your professor at that point. My professor didn't oh. allow one. I don't know. Oh, she allowed them, but like certain ones. And then also, don't let that scare you. No, you can't use a calculator in Math 1060 or Math 1080, but they will make the computation numbers easy enough to go with it. Like it's going to be. If your numbers fine. aren't working out, you're on the wrong track. <laughs> yeah, you really won't miss it. It's going to be okay. And then you can I also like to do it by hand anyway. Yeah, you can also tell people though when they're like like from people from other universities and they're like, oh, Clemson, like whatever. And you're like, actually, we learn calculus without a calculator. So <laughs> we're pretty smart down here, <laughs> whatever. Even though you're just like multiplying five by two, it's whatever. Also, I, we always get a lot, I know for me and Jasmine specifically, 
we both get like um we're like oh I'm a bioengineering major oh I'm a chemical engineering major and people are like oh I'm sorry and you're like no it's good I love it and they're like good luck and you're like, no it's fun it's a good time we get that a lot you'll get used to that yeah so a question just came in says are you yeah are you guys performing at the same academic level as you did in high school also did you need to buy a math book for math 1060 1080 so um i'm gonna start with the the textbook you need an access code to do the homework and there's an e-textbook that comes along with it so it's not like a physical textbook they don't even offer a physical textbook in the bookstore like they offer like a little access code that you buy yeah um there's and lecture then I'm videos with that too. Hmm? There's lecture videos with that too. With the access yeah. code. There's just like a lot of online resources. And like you can download certain softwares that you need for the class too, technically. Yeah. I never did, but um I'm definitely having to do higher level thinking <laughs> in these classes. So it's definitely yeah, like, not the same as high school. Like if you were to just look at my grades, it would look to be about the same because like I did well in high school, I'm doing pretty well in college, like that's on that basis, but like I'm performing so much, like if you were to look at exactly what I was doing, I'm performing at such a higher level and like much more efficiently than I was in high school because the curriculum is really hard and you have to change yourself to keep up with it. And it's a big like personal transition, which I found to be super exciting and I really liked that like I was like having moments where I would do something like really difficult in one of my classes and I would sit there and be like I just accomplished that I'm so cool <laughs> and like that would like give me a minute of like I do deserve to be here I'm smart enough to do this and it was just really like a good time yeah and a lot of your classes you're laying the foundation for future classes and I just think that's so interesting so like in that aspect, it's also difficult because you have no prior knowledge in some of these classes. Like my engineering specific ones, I had no, I had no prior knowledge about like what they're about to teach me. And so it's challenging in that aspect because you have nothing to draw on to help you with the class. Yeah, you definitely have to put in the work. A lot more work than high school, definitely. You have to put in a lot more like mental work, a lot more critical thinking to like things that you don't even think would require critical thinking. Like if you have a math problem that has a formula, there's no chance that it's just going to be a plugin. Like you're going to have to do some sort of something to get it right. And like the littlest things require critical thinking, but I think it makes it better. I think it makes it more fun, more interesting. It makes me want to work more than just like having a worksheet that I could do in five seconds and be like, well, guess that's that. Yeah. yeah. This past semester, my professors would love short answer questions. And so knowing how to use a formula did not help. Like you had to actually understand, like yeah, why is this you formula, formula you working? <laughs> That's the first, yeah, they'd be like, so, or like your professors will sometimes teach you the longhand form and they'd like, oh, by the way, here's the formula. But like, you don't need it anymore because you know what the formula does, if that makes sense. It's very strange, but it's very good. I really like it. Yeah. I have one of my professors, he was actually like a, I think it was a, he was a grad student. He was teaching one of my classes for um, business calc. And he was like, the way he would organize, he would make the, his quizzes, like the own, he would make the quizzes um, that he would give to us. And it would just be like all short answer questions. But then it was like, this is not how we'll look for the test though. But the questions are like some similar, but it wouldn't be, it would really be like multiple choice questions, then like a little bit of short answer but you would know how to answer those short answer questions as well as the multiple choice. You just, cause his tests were like 15 problems, but they'll be like eight pages. So it was like literally all just multiple questions. It was crazy. You yeah, each one have like a specific part as well. So it's like six parts to each one. Yes. Oh, multiple part questions. They love, they love those down there at Clemson. <laughs> they love a multiple part question. No, yeah, they're like them. based off your answer in part A. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But partial credit is a thing. Partial credit. Partial credit is part C so right, but part A and B are wrong. Yes, but you got you got the logic right. They'll give you points for thinking correctly, even if you didn't do it right. It's so nice. Like an example from like a biology class that I took my first semester, we were learning about the cell, 
and then you learned like what each organelle did and you knew that you knew what each organelle did and then you got to the test and they said what would happen if you didn't have peroxidases in the cell and you have to sit there and think okay i know what peroxidases do so what would happen if they didn't do that and you have to like really think about it like it's not going to be a like a regurgitation of information you have to critically think about your content and that's what jasmine was saying earlier you have to master the content you have to know like what it does what it would do in its absence what would happen if it changed like all that kind of thing if no one has any other questions um and go ahead and we're gonna log off. Um, as a reminder, this will be on YouTube for those who would like to view this later on. Um, that channel is Clemson Orientation, but can't wait to see you in the fall. Is there anything that Jasmine or Marla would like to say? Go Tigers. Yeah, <laughs> can't wait to see you. Oh my gosh, yes, I'm so excited. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching.